from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of spelling it out. When it comes to tshuva, do we need to spell out the sin that we've done, or is it enough to just confess and repent in a general sense of the word? If we look in the Gemara in Yuma, Pevav Rebbe's 86b, there's a debate. Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba, one of the great rabbis who gave smicha to so many rabbis, he says, he says, look, it says right there, when Moshe confesses the sins of the Jewish people, he says, look, the people have sinned a great sin and they made a golden calf. Did he have to say that? Let him just say that they made a great sin. And Rabbi Kiva says, no. You, uh, you, you should not specify, you should not specify the sin. Why? That happy is the one who is uh, removed, who is hidden. We, we, we don't want to know what everyone's sins are. So the Gemara says, you know, you, you don't want to tell everyone your sins. So even in front of God, we don't have to uh, announce it. And we'll explain that in a moment. Now, what's the halacha? Do we need to specify our sins or not specify if we want to do tshuva? What about on Yom Kippur? So generally we would say Rabbi Akiva against any other rabbi, Rabbi Akiva wins. In fact, when the Rush and the Rif, two great commentators, simply quote the Gemara and quote the debate between Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba and Rabbi Akiva without comment, the assumption is that Rabbi Akiva has the last word and he wins. And you don't have to spell out the actual sins. The Rambam, however, surprisingly, does not follow Rabbi Akiva. And he says, you need to spell out, spell out the sins. But then, surprisingly, on Yom Kippur, he says, the vidu of Yom Kippur is where we have sinned, maybe our ancestors. He doesn't specify the sin. So if you need to specify, why don't you need to specify it in Yom Kippur? What's going on? Rabbi Salvation explained that the the Vito Yom Kippur is similar to any time that a person is going to, is about to receive kapara. When you're going to receive, re, receive atonement, you want to confess your sins. You want to make it an equal relationship. If God is going to forgive you. You should at least, at least you can do is confess what you've done. Similarly, when we bring a sacrifice, we're going to get atonement. But first we confess our sins. Or perhaps a prerequisite in order to get atonement. We need to confess our sins. So for that, it's enough to say a general confession. We have sinned. We have been rebellious. But for, uh, for someone doing tshuva the rest of the year, that's different. That's a tshuva to atone for, it's not to atone, not to get forgiveness, but simply to repent. In order to repent, you have to specify what you did. He agrees with Rabbi Yudhubimba. You might also argue, based on the area we'll see in a moment, that when you're, when you're trying to do tshuva, from a very specific sin like during the year. So, you know, I speak too much Lajan Har. So I'll start to stop. So then I, I should confess about that because that's what I'm working on. On Yom Kippur, the tshuva is not about one thing. Someone walks into Yom Kippur and says, I'm going to, this year, I'm going to focus on this. It's a good tactic. It's a good idea. Those who focus every year on one thing, you can become a tremendous Baal Tshuva through, over the years by building up one thing a year. It's a nice practical tactic. But ideally, to focus on one thing on, on Yom Kippur is my opening. Only one thing. You can only think of one thing that's wrong. You can't put on your tefillin a little better. You can't daven a little better. You can't bench a little better. You can't say your brachos a little better. You can't be better to your parents, and be better to your fellow human being. You might love your neighbor more. And there's so much to do. Surely you can confess. Um, you can repent on more than one thing. So to specify one or two things or even a list, it's not about a list. It's about Upgrading yourself in general. Maybe Yom Kippur is about a general upgrade, about how we're sinful in general, not about one particular thing. So that's what I might suggest. The Meiri actually mentions this idea in the name of the Goanim. Meiri was a medieval Provencal rabbi, and he quotes the Goanim from the earlier era. And he says, if you want to do a, ch a tshuva in general, you want a general upgrade of your religious life, then you know what you should do? Don't specify anything because it's a general upgrade. But if you're doing repentance from a particular thing, then obviously you should mention a specific thing that's wrong. A lot of people say you don't need to 
uh, specified to Bali. Itur said you didn't need to. Rabbi Yonah says, after all, we follow Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yonah, not so much in the Shari Tshuva. I think it's not clear there, but uh, but it's quoted in the Shilta Gibori that Rabbi Yonah is of that opinion. Uh, now, <clears throat> if we do take the position that you don't have to specify, what if you want to specify? He's okay, fine. I follow Rabbi Akiva. You don't have to specify. We followed Rabbi Yonah. You follow Rabbi Akiva. Don't have to specify. Okay, but I want to specify. I want to be extra good. So comes a pre and says, I don't think so. Happy is the one who, who's above the sin, who, who hides it. You don't want to specify the sin. It's, it's like boasting about the sin. You don't want to say that. So the pre thinks that according to Rabbi Akiva, you should not. It's forbidden to specify. However, the Shulchan Aruch does take a position that's not necessary to specify. And many Sephardim do not specify, although I learned that uh, many do. And uh, the, the, the Rabbi Yonah says, oh, in his community, they didn't specify anything. They didn't, they didn't make that whole list of al what we say, you know, the sin that we sin with Lashonar and the sin that we sin uh, with, the, with, the, with the wrong foods and this type of sin and that type of sin. They didn't say that. Many communities just said, just like we do in Slichok, we say, Shamdu Bagadnu, we say we're guilty in general, but we don't specify. So the Shokanak takes that position. However, it says if you want to specify, you can specify. Now the question is, what about us in Ashkenazim? We do have a long list of things that we specify. But so many things, some of the things don't apply. I mean, thank God I can't say that I did all the things on the list, right? Maybe something you can use your imagination to say that you did some of the things, but some of them just totally don't apply to me. So how can we say it? So the Meiri says, it's fine. We say a general list to not to embarrass anyone. As a matter of fact, we can say it out loud. Generally, we don't say our sins out loud. That would be boasting of your sin. But, especially according to your bikini, you should have better to hide it. But since everyone's saying it, everyone's singing it. So it's not clear who's, who did it and who didn't do it. So we can say it out loud. You could also claim, as I've seen others claim this, that you're not saying it for yourself. It's the sin that we have done with Znut uh, or with the immorality. I hope I didn't do the immorality. So maybe somebody did, and I'm confessing on behalf of everybody, whether that works or not, a different question. So there are basically uh, two views on what, what the issue is here. One view is that, is that it would be a, an insult to God to just go around saying, well, you know, I spoke Lush and Har, as if like you're actually mentioning that. I mean, do you need to mention that? Like when, when the Sarah uh, Mashkin, when the, uh, the butler was, was afraid about his sin, he very hesitantly mentioned his sin. You don't want to mention to the Pharaoh that you sinned so badly that you landed out in jail. You know, it's not something you want to mention. So he's mentioning it seems to say that uh, you're not afraid to mention it to God. It's a lack of respect for God. But on the other hand, you want to strengthen yourself in your resolve against what you did. So you have to mention it. Uh, as a matter of fact, maybe there's an element of embarrassment. You should be embarrassed. Be embarrassed, and that's right. You should be. Um, the, um, so these are the two ways of looking at it. Is it a matter of that it's the diminution of God's honor to mention the sin? as if you don't care, as if it's not a big deal. Or the other way around, that no, you have to strengthen yourself in your resolve to fight this particular thing. Um, now, um, what about the chazan? Should the chazan say, and the sin that we have sinned and this and that? He's speaking on behalf of all the Jewish people. Why is he talking about his particular sin? So the kolbo says, it's okay. Uh, no, he shouldn't say it. He shouldn't say all the list of things because after all, it doesn't all apply to him. But again, you could argue the opposite. No, the chazan should say it because he's saying it on behalf of everybody and somebody in the audience, someone in the Jewish community has done probably all the different things on the list. I hope not, but you know, it's very possible that they did. So, uh, so this is, uh, these are the two views of spelling out the sins. However, I think in general, we may also suggest the following divergence of opinion here. If we spell out the particular sin, then what we're saying is, you know what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me is that I speak too much Lashon Har. It's that I once ate something that wasn't 100% kosher. 
that I didn't speak to my parents with respect one time. I'm claiming that that's the problem. But actually, when I say Hashamnu Bagadim, I'm, I'm guilty, I've sinned, like Hashanu, Avinu, I, I sin willfully, I sin unwillfully. When you say that, he's saying that it's really, it's not just about the particular sin that you did, that you spoke Lashon Hara, you didn't speak nicely to your mother. It's not just about that. Those are simply reflections of a broader rebelliousness, a pesha, a brazenness that you have against God and against the Torah. So is it really, about, is Shuvah really about going back to the particular thing that you did or no? Says Rabbi Akiva, no. Cover up the sin. That's not about the sin. It's about your general comportment and your general attitude. And that needs improving. And therefore, it's the general confession that really gets the root of it, that you're sinful. That's the problem. You're a sinner. The details, that's just, that's a subcategory. And we don't need to focus. The other rabbi says, no, that from the details comes the oh, big picture. If, 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 you're, if you're about those particular sins, then that's, that's, your, that's your sin. And the way to do tshuva is to focus on those particular things, and then you won't be a rebel after that. So these are also two different uh, points of view. So as we approach the uh, Yom Kippur this year, we need to build, think both in the klal and the prat. We need to think about particular sins that we've done and to either think about them or articulate them. Depending on the view, Ramam says we should articulate. Then we have to have a more general view, like Rabbi Kiva. We have to say, what's the general problem here? A general problem is maybe rebelliousness. But what is the general problem? The general problem is I'm not respecting God enough. This uh, is also something we need to work on this, this, this Yom Kippur and every day of our lives. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshis Fire with the congregation for our discussion of Yom Kippur and atonement and tshuva. Uh, join us each week for a discussion of the holidays in the Parsha. Thank you very much. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asb.org.